Uh oh. Uh oh. Crap, just do be right back. Uh, hang we'll on. We'll be right back. Oh, I don't know why it's not working. Oh no. Be right back. Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles on K-Wings Let's Plays. Don't forget yeah. to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Helps out tremendously. And special shoutouts to Capcom for providing a copy of this game for review, walkthrough, and live streaming purposes. So, awesome! Had a little bit of uh, technical issues today, but I mean, live streams again, never perfect. But um, just a reminder that uh, the next live stream series will be tonight at 10 o'clock on the brand new Marvel Future Revolution game. And I'll be continuing the DC Universe clone late tonight via a two and a half hour stream. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, I will not be looking at the new Power Ranger today. The new Power Ranger character will be done tomorrow uh, in place of the Bowser Jr. thing. And then, uh, yeah, I don't... I, I guess I'll have to have like an, uh, at least 45 minutes or 30 minutes to charge my phone again so I can stream the Avengers thing. But anyway. Yeah, and tomorrow I might have to stream <clears throat> my morning video on my channel because Luke says it's just not working on this channel. What now? You said I'm not supposed to do morning streams. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I we'll we'll talk about that after, honey. I'm I'm all I'm on Ace Attorney mode right now. <clears throat> all right, and uh, let us know how the audio levels are, guys. If everything works out well. So okay. Mike is like a mile from your face. There we go. All right, so this is the final part of the trial for the uh, Natsumi-san, and uh, we'll get a title for the trial once some cool statement is said. Before the recess, we heard the most startling accusation from the defense. Namely, that the victim of the case we heard here only a few days ago was the true perpetrator to this incident. A reckless, rash, and prejudiced charge of wrongdoing in my opinion, my lord. However, the prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from the dubious eastern shores. Wow. Uh, thank you, I guess. For that backhanded consideration. Yeah, I know, right? Yes, that seemed a bit cold. Rather cold assessment from the Honorable Br British Prosecutor. Wait, does the say. judge have little, tiny little, little what? ponytails in the back of his head? Mm. When he wags his head, it has like little braids. He's wearing a wig. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Lord Van Jikes, uh, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Give me a moment, sir. I need to wave my hand. Ready and waiting in the witness antechamber, my lord. All right, let's cut the music then. Very well, bailiff, bring the witness in. Let's get the sockets continuing. <laughs> oh... Witness, state your names and occupations for the court, please. William Shamsphere, my liege. For my occupation, I can only say that I am a tragic victim to be pitied. Currently unemployed, in other words, yes. <laughs> I am Olive Green, a fledgling artist. Well, no, not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure. Who's weak-spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. 
Also currently unemployed, in other words. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, she's all gonna right. make me cry. She's so sad. Oh my goodness. All right, all right. Mr. Shamspear. My lord, I am thy humble servant. Yes, whatever. I'm afraid that you're no longer merely a victim in this affair. The possibility has been arise that you are in fact the assailant intent on taking the life of your fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for not else, my lord. Anyway, Miss Green. Yes? You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Yes, the officer did explain. Okay. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> he said that I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. And do you accept the charge, Miss Green? Mm, I don't know anything about any poisoning. No. Nope. And I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady, die to live. Verily, I know not the prickly pea pigmented personage. What? Mm, I feel bad because we got Miss Green down to kill herself, and now we're gonna send her to prison. Well, I, I mean... don't want to say she'd be better off, but. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, right. It just feels wrong. We should protect her. She's so sad. Okay. Very well. Let us proceed then with the matter at hand. That being to the uh. Ask, ascertain whether or not Miss Green has been involved in this affair or not. I think she's innocent, even if she's guilty. We should let her off. No. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? I barely even go to the East End anyway. Mm, nope, her eyes are moving. She's lying. What? Yep. So it happens that I passed that neighborhood six days ago. That's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in the hospital, fighting for my life. Yes, having been unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street outside of the Gerahab warehouse. Air household. Blah. I like warehouses. I live in them. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. Yes. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife. There are no faults of my own, and now I'm under suspicion? What other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Hmm, your energies may be better spent worrying about the random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. Ah, uh, at this point in time, well, all that appears to be connected with Mr. Shamspear's lodgings is the Briar Road incident of six days ago, sir. That's why we would like you to testify formally about exactly that happened, Miss Green. Oh no! The incident six days ago? You mean you want me to relive that awful accident? Unfortunately, yes, because I have no soul. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we will be interested in hearing from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. Eh? But, 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 what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Very well, let us proceed then with the circus. The witness will present their formal testimony to the court once again. And I'll be sipping on my tea. On the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road the evening of the 17th of February. Alrighty. Witness testimony. What's the title of this video? The eve uh, evening of the 17th. Eh, nah, not a good enough that title. Sounds weird. Nope. It was six days ago, about 5 p.m., I was walking along in the snow when I suddenly was stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case had their lodgings. I was at the tavern of the eve of which thou speakest, for I had bespoke my supper. What? It was the first time... Oh, you bespoke? I don't know. I don't know. It was the first time I'd been in the area. 
I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all this business. Hmm. So says you. Miss Green is innocent. Yes, the second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. Miss Green must be protected. <laughs> One can only presume this is a most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you were not in your room, Mr. Shamsbeard. Twas the following morn when I did awaken that I learned of the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of law make on the floor above mine. Oh. When Ozek, ah, when natsumi son was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Uh, is suspected there is nothing connecting these two witnesses by happenstance. Word I've never heard. It's true. It does seem as though they're unrelated at first glance, but I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here. I feel certain of it. And this is my one and only chance to expose it. All right. Consul, you may now cross-examine these two witnesses if you wish. Huh? Ah, uh, yes, my lord. Thank you. Cross examination. The evening of February 17th. It was six days ago, about 5 p.m. I was walking along in the snow when I was suddenly stopped in the back. Let's relive that horrible event. Why? I'm well acquainted with the case. I'm sorry you had to go through that. It had to be a pain in the back. No, you're not sorry. You brought me here and accused me of murder. I hate you. Okay. <laughs> it was awful. I still can't believe I was unconscious for so long. And I woke up to find that the case had been solved and the culprit arrested. Yes, the incident has been resolved already. Perhaps it would help you to consider it a bad dream that ended with your waking and you should now be forgotten. But I'm still here. Yes, I suppose so. Thanks for that. But before uh, you put it completely behind you, Miss Green, I need you to remember the details as sharply as you can. I don't want to. You must tell the court exactly what happened that day for us to arrive at the truth about this new case. The trouble is, there's nothing to tell, really. I was just walking along the pavement. And coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case have their lodgings. Hang on a second. Uh, um, just what type of point are you trying to get across there? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, the art school you attend. That What's it called again? Oh, yes. It's the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. According to Mr. Shams, that's just in the vicinity of Brixton Road, which is some ten stops away from the scene of the underground. I believe you mentioned before that you also live on Brixton Road, isn't that right? So why then would you have been walking along Briar Road in the middle of the East End? She said last time she was at a meeting with somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's because, um, oh yes, of course, I thought I might, it might make a nice picture. The witness is a student of art. City dwelling artists can't all paint grand urban vestiges. Vistas. Vistas. What? Vistas. Paintings. We like to paint vistas, Dracula. That's right. I happen to like the crumbling look of that part of town. It's depressing like me. Wow. All right. Perhaps quaint would have been less grading term. The point is, she's definitely hiding something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it seems she's not going to be forthcoming with the truth. As it seems, if she's trying to hide why she was there that evening, it must mean that there's a reason for not wanting us to know. That's the key to this. But when we went to, when we went to her room, it said that she had a photo like of a, a person that she was supposed to meet that day. Like a, a note from somebody that said they had inf information on her fiancé's death. Mm-hmm. 
And she's not even talking about that. And you, Mr. Shamsphere, on the evening of the incident six days ago, would you tell the court what exactly you were doing? Twould be my pleasure, sire. How is he a sire? Would he be sir? I was at the tavern of the eve of which you speak as for I had bespoke my dinner, but it did not bespoke back. Hold it! Hold it! All right, ham. A tavern, you say? Which one? Uh, twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. Tis a jewel in the East End. A jewel? You mean a dump? A little unexpected, I feel. Hmm. What do you mean, Lord Dracula? This slug and salad offers unusually fine dining for the locality, at least. Slug and salad. Not an establishment that you would expect to be patronized by a man not even with a crumb of bread in his room. Oh? It's true! The menu lists premium crust of bread and glasses of water in different levels of cloudiness. Susie's been there. I would have expected wow. the grubs grubbery in the local vicinity to be more appropriate ah appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas, or rather soapy water and pea like mush. <laughs> All equally ap appetizing? I just wanted to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? Uh, how different can water really be? It's water. Well, water in New York is different than Pennsylvania. That's true, but that's... Uh, Let's not talk about the water in New York. <laughs> or perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. I had to grow up boiling the water in New York because the Hudson is... Well, the Hudson. <clears throat> a specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. You know the old saying, don't go swimming in the Hudson. That's all the the saying is. Agreed. Uh, the fact that one day, on that day of all days, he dined at a place he wouldn't normally. It does stand out. So Mr. Shamsphere's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that can explain those actions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whose actions were suspicious? Uh, Shamsphere. Uh, when did he say the actions were suspicious? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well... I guess we'll present something. I don't know. I don't know, know what... Mr. Shamsphere. Yes, sir? On the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Salad, a place you don't normally patronize? For a very particular reason? I don't know what you're talking about. Pray if thou's the some purpose speakest. Oh, he did visit the slug. Very time. well. I'll present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the slug and salad on that day. Uh. Maybe we should examine it. Examine. Yeah. X. Examine. All right. So we've got recounts burglary, six accounts suspected murder. Holy cow. Died of natural causes whilst in prison, his final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The established 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains uncovered. Uh, Manchester Strange Prison announced the death of convicted person. Uh, I don't see anything about the salad place. Okay. Uh, poison's not going to help us. Photograph. Uh, victim's medical report. That won't help us. Well, why you had to be at the Slug and Salad that day? Uh, Secondhand book receipt. That doesn't help us. Uh, newspaper. That doesn't help us. Oh, why did I have to be at the Slug and Salad that day? Uh, the rest of an envelope should not, could not be located. Ooh, I may have accidentally done something I wasn't supposed may to. May I look at it? Yeah, sure. Why don't you do that? I'm gonna examine this stuff. Mm. I feel so bad for Miss Green. I know. A meal for Gabor, Canterbury earnings. Hmm. That's just the. Um... Oh, there might be something in there. Oh, never mind. We already. We already looked. Looked at it. Can you can you turn it more? 
Like, so that the envelope is facing us. Yeah. I'm trying to go inside of it. Okay. Oh, no. Never mind. <sighs> mm. Let's look in salad. Maybe because he didn't have any food. Maybe because he didn't have any food? Oh. Like he was hungry, he didn't go grocery shopping. That's the medical report. <laughs> Toxic effects. Yeah, that's not gonna help us. Maybe the- maybe it was the letter. I mean, maybe somebody sent him a letter. We don't have anything, we just have the offender's file. We can't present anything. I made a mistake. I thought Item I made a mistake. natural causes. Estimate a thousand. Manchester s Strangle br announced the convicted murder. Several cases. Uh... Yeah, I messed something up. I don't know. I would guess the letter, though, but... What letter? The, the end of the letter. So, Torn up end of the envelope? Yeah, maybe someone sent him a letter and said, Please meet me at the slug and salad. Take that! I don't know. Oh, good Horatio. There are more things in heaven and earth than on your dreamt in your philosophy. Horatio? I believe it's a line from Shakespeare's play. Hamlet, Mr. Narahodo. But the line from the great Shakespeare or from this Mr. Shamspear, the message is the same. My learned friend is wide of the mark. <laughs> Hardly surprising given the witnesses of two literary quotes. I do wonder if there isn't perhaps some evidence that would explain why it was the slug and salad that he visited. I think we have discussed the issue enough. Let us return to the witness's testimony, please. Gladly, I would do thy bidding, Horatio. <laughs> Tara Ann says you don't have what you need yet. Yeah. It was the first time I'd been in that area. A little matter to attend to, that's all. Hold it! Okay. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate, if you would mind. <sighs> It was nothing, really. It's not worth mentioning at all. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Oh, oh yes. It was related to the card you were holding. Mm. Oh, should we save just in case? or? Oh, we have tons okay. of lives. We're fine. Miss Green! Oh, oh. Oh, oh. What was that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. Dun, 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 dun. From memory, I believe the heart. Ah, wow. From memory, I believe the card contained a note that read, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Oh, what does that matter? This has nothing to do with Duncan at all. Uh, uh. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Shamsphere, do you have something to say to this court? Oh. To be or not to be, that is the question. Ah, pray forgive the great bard's words. Bringeth from within we with near thought. Don't tell me it's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? Mm. <sighs> Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Mm. Something of relevance, perhaps? Uh, um, well... Nay, sire, twas nothing at all. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Presumably, you know the name Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. Ah, uh, I would it were so, but sadly, nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours? Oh! Uh, Miss Green! Me? My lord? Have I done something wrong? The card that was mentioned before containing the note, do you have it upon your person? I do, yes, but 
I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should throw it away, really. <gasps> oh! Green it matches envelope. the other one! Before you dispose of it, the court would like to take it into its evidence, please, if you don't mind. The green card, haha, <laughs> green card, has been added to the court record. Mm. Of course, that's what links Mr. Shamsphere and Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. Now then, continue with your testimony, please, if you don't mind, Miss Green. Okay, then. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about this business at all. Hmm. <sighs> Gotta get this painting done. Gonna get this painting done. Alright. People taking up my time, making me testify here. Yeah, might as well get some painting out of the way. The envelope has ripped rather carelessly, hasn't it? Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that. Hmm. Ah! What is it, Narahado? The way the envelope is torn, I'm almost sure I've seen the exact same shape somewhere else. Uh, oh, you don't mean... You were thinking of this piece of evidence, Mr. Narahado? Exactly, that's it. Try to match them up, Susie. Puzzle dun, piece. Dun, dun. They go together perfectly. The torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs with this card. Oh, I know what happened. She sent him the letter to meet her at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. And then when she came in to put the poison on his pipe, then then she took the letter, the other part of it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Because he clearly ripped that, not her. Yep, and then he's, he hid part of it under his floorboards. Yeah, she's Or no, more... it wasn't under his floorboard. It was on top. She's more dainty than he is. Mm, yeah. Okay, so now we know that the envelope actually fits together with the uh, other thing. Hmm. Tim says, for Shams Fair, I feel like he would totally combust if he was ever told if he ever told the truth. There's the evidence, Zoe. Yep. It was the first time that I'd been in the area. I had a little murder to attend to. That's all. <sighs> yes, you did. It's called your letter. Objection. I hope. Huh? The witness last statement is clearly contradictory when you consider this piece of evidence here. Oh, wait, no. Yes, undeniably! Oops. You say it's undeniable, Consul, but I fail to see any contradiction here at all. Oh, I might have jumped the gun again. <laughs> I think perhaps that itself is the contradiction? Mm. Indeed! And guess what? You get a strike! Ha 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 ha! Judge. Oh, the judge is rude. Time for me to rethink that. I had to. I had to question her first, and then. It was the first time I'd been in that area. Wait, it wasn't the first time you'd been in the area. Save. Though. Now we save because, oops, whoopsies. She could probably. Well, yeah. Is there any way to show she had been in the area before? Well, we got a state. We got a reaction from what's his name, so we have to go through this. I don't want to hurt Miss Green. She was so sad. She deserved to kill that guy. Her fiance died. I know. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It was nothing, really. It's not even worth mentioning. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. It was related to the card you were holding. Miss mm. Green! Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, oh no. Oh yeah, hey, what's going on? You just hit something behind your back. No, I didn't. And then you killed I, a mouse. I... That's my pet mouse. He's sleeping. No, I don't believe so. He likes to take naps sometimes. <laughs> Taking a nap right now. Actually. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. It's been a long nap. What? Oh, that doesn't. What does that matter? This has nothing to do with Duncan. I mean, why would you bring that up? Duncan Ross. Please, Miss Green, tell us more about that note. <laughs> oh, Droggle says yes, but we have to defend uh, Natsumi. That's right, Droggle. That's true, we have to defend Oh Natsumi. my gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, there's really nothing I can tell you, but I can assure you it's unrelated to all of this. Completely unrelated. Is it now? 
Duke, you're gonna make her cry. The truth is you went out on that day because that's what that note told you to do, isn't it? The instructions were for you to come to Briar Road at 5 o'clock that afternoon. That guy sent it. Hmm. <sighs> I didn't think I should go at first, but then... I thought it might be a good opportunity to see what the East End looks like. Hmm. Very well, if that's your final word on the matter. Go on, please continue, miss. Hmm. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all this business. Okay, then. Hold it! Uh... Yeah, you didn't regain consciousness until the day after the trial, did you not, in the early hours? Oh, Tara says, press statement three with, and present the card. Exactly. So how could I have anything to do with it, then? And why are you making me here? Yeah, I have to finish my painting. And yet you still hold me in here to court like this, honestly. So at the time of the poisoning, the witness was unconscious in her hospital bed. Could there be a more airtight alibi, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, don't address the jury right now. And yet, in spite of all that, you claim that I was the culprit. <sighs> well, I am, uh, uh... How dare you? But you certainly have produced any evidence to support your wild claim, have you now? There you have it. The good lady has yet to see evidence, my learned friend. You failed! I'm working on it. Console, I will point out here that the jury's next decision will be final. We're really up against the wall here. <laughs> Scientist said, for everyone who was not here last time, we were accusing Miss Green of poisoning Mr. Sham with strychnine. Yep. Uh, oh, Mr. Narodo, you pursued Mr. Sham's fear wonderfully here. It's worked out well, hasn't it? We have a new clue at last. All right, now I need to pull off a really insightful objection somewhere. As you manage to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Ah, yes, of course. And yelling out objections isn't necessarily the best way to do that, I suppose. May I just say something? Hmm. If I ever became a lawyer and... Like, I found out someone was really sad and they had their, like, fiancé die and they were trying to get revenge because they were so sad. I would try to get them, like, a reduced sentence if they testified the truth. Mm-hmm. Because, like, sometimes people just are so sad. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's not her fault. She, she's, like, broken up about it. Hold it! Yeah. I, I feel for the character. A tavern, you say? Which one? "'Twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. "'Tis a jewel in the East End. "'Yes, a little unexpected, I feel. "'Hmm? "'What do you mean, Lord Dracula? "'The slug and salad usually offers uh, fine dining "'for the local locality, at least. "'Not an establishment for a riffraff like these, "'who can barely have a crumb to their name. "'What?' It's true! The menu lists premium crust of bread and glasses of water in different levels of cloudiness. Mm. I would have expected the grub and grubbery in the local vicinity to be more appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas, or rather, soupy water and pea like mush. Oh, oh you know, Miss Green could plead insanity because if she became so distraught over the death of her fiancé, you could plead insanity. They didn't have an insanity plea back then. Oh, I'm just saying you could now. They would think that you're possessed by the devil if you're insane. So. Oh, then they would probably do worse things to Burn! you. Uh, I don't know. Equally appetizing, I suppose. I just wanted to try some water in a different pub. Was that so wrong? Yes. How different can water really be? Or perhaps there's more plausible explanation, Rinosuke. Uh. I'm just trying to help Miss Green out. I'm just trying to help a girl out here. Okay. A specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. The fact that on that day of all days, he dined at a place he wouldn't normally does stand out. So Mr. Shamsphere's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that... Eh, yes, we have evidence now. 
Wait, maybe somebody asked him to come there and asked her to come there. Mm, no, I don't think there are two people involved with this. Okay. Mr. Shamsphere. <laughs> yes, sir? On the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Salad, a place where you don't normally uh, visit? For a very different reason? I uh, don't know what you're talking about. Pray if thou hast some purpose speakest. Stop speaking weird. Very well. I'll present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the Slug and Salad. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Are you on statement three? Because yep. Terra Ann said present the ah letter. I believe this card reveals the answer. Music oh, Drago also said it. Good lord, Miss Green's card. Ha, green card. Yes, I, I get it. It's a... It's a joke for immigration. That's right, uh, my lord. It reads as follows. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It's a matter of utmost importance. Mr. Shamsphere, your actions on the afternoon of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. Oh! Personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamsphere? Um, well? Excuse me, may I say something? Oh, uh, yes, of course, Miss Green. What is it? That card was delivered to me. Huh. It doesn't have anything to do with this old man, does it? Well, you would think so, yes, but it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? Yes, of course you may, polite Miss Green. What is it? Oh, I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Very well. The violin music was just getting good, though. You may amend your testimony to include details about the particular note. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. We must protect Miss Green. The note was delivered to me at my address, and it's nothing to do with the odd man next to me here. Hmm. Uh, objection. There was a piece of the card in. I think you said that you received it the day before the incident, did you not? Mm, yes, that's right. There appears to be no indication of the sender's name or address on the envelope. It was in my letterbox. That's all that I know. I'm afraid I've no idea who sent it. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Who is this Duncan Ross, please? A friend of mine. He attended the same school as me. Uh, the same art school. He he passed away in a tragic accident a month ago now, though. Well, I wasn't sure what to make of the note, but to be honest, but in the end, I decided to go. So you found out what the information was then? Uh, of course I didn't. You're not even thinking straight, are you? Whilst on her way, she was stabbed in the back. As my learned friend hopefully remembers. Oh, yeah, I, of course I do. She never made it to the meeting, actually. Oh. Oh, Mr. Narahodo, you pursued Mr. Shamsphere wonderfully there. Huh? Oh, yeah, it's worked out well, hasn't it? Uh, I have a new clue. All right, now I need to pull off a really insightful objection. As you manage to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Ah, oh, yes, of course! And yelling out objections isn't necessarily the best way to do that, I suppose. Alright, so... It was six days ago. The note has delivered to me at my address. Nothing to do with the odd man next to me at all here. Oh. Yeah. Except for this. Objection. Oh. The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address, correct? And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in the hospital. Oh, 
yes, I did. It's terrible. Everything that's happened to me now is terrible. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. It is terrible. If it's all true, that is. What? What do you mean? Uh-oh. <sighs> well, Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn end of an envelope that said came to you, yet we found the other piece in his apartment. Oh, is it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. Uh, wh where? Where did you find that? In Mr. Shamspear's room. In what? In, in my room? Mr. Shamspear. Do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, well... Your actions that afternoon follow the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the Slug and Salad of Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. And so that's exactly where you went, is it not? I, um... Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamsphere. You already knew about this note, didn't you? And you, Miss Green. Ah, what did I do now? As this torn off edge of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamsphere's room. So how is it that you came it came to be in your possession? Uh, I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist after all. Uh-huh. How would I know? There is only one explanation. The broken... You broke into Mr. Shamsphere's room and stole it! I'm innocent and sweet. I'm angry now. You did what? Sorry, thou hast what? You broke... I mean, you were in my room? What on earth do you want with me? Punch him, Miss Green! I'm sorry, but she should just strangle him right now. It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. Oh... Miss Green. Oh yeah, guys, if you guys mention the pandemic in the chat, it might trigger it might uh, be like a flag word for our video, just FYI. Uh yes. Whilst you have the court sympathy, I'm sure, for the suffering you endured in recent events. Anyone found to be giving false testimony in court of law will be duly punished with perjury. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Very well then, witness. You will give a formal testimony again now. On the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have well received. Do 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 Witness testimony. Anomaly of the note. There's there's that's it. That's the The anomaly of the note. Let's have a little breather. The note anomaly. Resolve. Breather. Yeah, a little breather. Anomaly of the note. I have to say, though, this guy doesn't really look like a hardened criminal. He looks kind of... prissy. I guess that's the whole point. He's trying to look as not like himself as possible. <sighs> Unless theater people are insane and murderers. I thought you were petting a cat. You're petting... A bear. But you're not even petting the bear's head. Oh, I... That's weak. Okay. Sorry, I can pet the bear's head. Well, I mean, I'm sure the stuffed bear would... Did I get that for you for Valentine's Day or something? When did I get that for you? I don't remember. I don't know. He's been behind the couch for a while. All right, here we go. Anomaly of the note. Oh, you got it to me with some flowers. It had, came with some flowers. Had to be before the pandemic. It was a long time. I haven't, I haven't trusted packages coming to the house in some time. I do remember now. It was a week ago. Ah, uh, poor adventure that a note was delivered onto me. On the day with therein, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad, yet nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening I shared the company of the Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean? You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? 
Why would I ever do that? It's ridiculous. I can point out the villain here. As for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. Maybe mm. he's stuck into my house. No, I don't I don't believe so. You now claim to have received this letter, do you, Mr. Shamspear? Oh, faith tis so, my lord, and I would swear to have set upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I have not laid eyes upon it since. Mm, well, that being the case, young lady, it would appear that your testimony was, how do you say, a lie? Mm, a lie? Is that what you think? How unfair of you to think that I'm the one lying. I beg your pardon. I'm the uh, judge in this proceedings. Yep, and I think you're lying. I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said. A fledgling artist don't lie. Uh -huh. We paint. That note was delivered to me at my address. Besides, we all know who the liar here is. He's right here. If that's true, Miss Green... How do you explain the facts? This part of the envelope was without question found in Mr. Shamsphere's room. I don't know why I should explain. I'm sorry. I don't have to. I'm a fledgling artist. My job here is just to say what happened. That's all. It's your job to give the explanations and the proofs. You're the fledgling lawyer, aren't you? The fledgling will do his best, thank you very much. It's true, Miss Green, you don't have to explain it. Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Well, Consul? Okay, I'm ready, my lord. Ready well, let the circus continue. The defense will now proceed with the cross-examination of the witnesses again. Uh, Galen wanted to... He said, K-Wing, with my alternate account, I'm not subscribed, but when I searched Marvel Future Revolution, your stream was the third video to show up. Well, I mean... Okay, oh, that's good. I do have an announcement to make, guys. Um, uh, Just to kind of break with um the game for a second. The investigation of the channel has concluded. Um, We will be going to a new network um, overseas, uh, which is not going to impact you guys. It might actually help improve our video views. However... This is hard to say, but um, after hearing from Google, after the investigation has concluded over the hacking incident, all the videos that were in the search engine the day of the hacking are gone. Um, they will never be returned to their proper place in the search engine. However, any new content we do that does very well, like that Marvel uh, Revolution thing, which I'm very happy to hear that we're number three in the search. That's amazing. Um, it just shows the quality of our work. But anything prior to October of 2019 is gone. Or 2020. October 2020 is when the hacking occurred. Um, and also a lot of YouTube channels are being impacted by these hackers. And once their channels are wrecked, they're wrecked. But with your yeah. guys' help and getting membership, um, all our work was not for nothing. We love what yeah. we do. Uh, it would be nice to be paid for all our past videos because we have 9,000. Over 9,000! But... You know, uh, there was a there was a guy that was in better, worse shape than us. We won't say what happened to him, but yeah, it wasn't there was good. a guy with millions of subscribers that got hacked, and I can't even talk about what happened to him. It was he, really he bad. had a he had a sad ending in life, but he yeah, <clears throat> he basically his channel just kept plummeting until he couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So so I mean, this is really hard. Um, we have a lot of games coming out in September that we can kind of do our best with and. We can't really do it without you guys, so thank you so much for supporting the Marvel series. Uh, I'll be playing that again at 10 o'clock tonight. I'm hoping for uh, a de decent amount of people watching it as well because it's a free-to-play game. It's DC Universe, but yeah, we did find out that all the videos that were removed from the search engine because of the Bitcoin scam, they cannot magically be restored. Um, they did their best at trying to restore some of them, but, um, you know, it's just... It is what it is. The only reason the Nightwing 01 channel is not impacted is because it was never hacked. So that's why we still enjoy Top Search for Arkham and some of the other games we did. But um, I just wanted to say thank you guys. And we're going to do our best, you know, to keep making content and keep doing the live streams. Because the live streams are kind of the best way for us to be seen. Uh, so that's why we stream as much as we do. 
But anyway, uh, we resume your case already in progress. Thank you so much for the question, and thank you again for your support on the brand new Marvel mobile game. Ms. Green clearly did break into Shamsphere's room. There could be no question of that. Dun -dun. Actually, she didn't. I think that she's innocent. Just read the lines, Amber. And that's how she acquired the note. But I don't think she did acquire the note that way. Yes. <laughs> Two facts that are starting to lead me into a possible explanation for all of this. No, Renosuke, she's innocent. And it's not a pretty one. No. No, nope, we gotta go, Amber. Susato flies across the courtroom and, nope. hug, and is like, she must be protected at all costs! Cross-examination, the anomaly of the note. I do remember it was a week ago, per adventure, that the note was delivered onto me. Hold it. No! And you can shed any light on the contents of the note at all? Nay, sire. Tis as strange to me as a foreign tongue. Even with the knowledge of literature as great as my own, verily it's impenetrable. But Mr. Duncan Ross has lodgings in the same place as you did. In effect, he was your neighbor, so surely you knew him, didn't you? Uh... Alack, if the choices be twixt, I knew him and I knew him not. Then tis with foreboding that I be forced to declare we were but small measure of acquainted. Despite your claims, though, you followed the note's instructions and went to the slug and salad. Presumably that was nothing to do with your knowledge of literature? Uh, marry not. Uh, they were all for the better for me, sire, save for your lure of curiosity. Um, so tis true. I was compelled by my own eager heart to betake myself to the tavern, yet in the end, my curiosity was not satisfied. Okay, whatever. On the day, writ therein, blah, blah, blah. Hold it! Um, so even after waiting for an hour, nobody, like, appeared whatsoever? Well, um, yes, sire, tis as thou sayest. Huh, really? You paused for a moment before you answered there, pal. What? In truth, uh, when thou asked whether nobody appeared, I did suddenly recall... Yes, really? You mean to tell the court that somebody did appear after all? I was not alone that night in the slug and salad, my lord. Tis returning to me now. I did treat my lips to almost clear water and my innards to a premium crust of bread. <sighs> And all around me danced a great many companions. What do you mean? Uh, flies, sir. Flies. Good lord. Flies in the restaurant? What? Doesn't sound good. In the name of Beelzebub, that what they were. The Lord of Flies. Fairies, perchance, from Midsummer Night's Dream, come to taunt me? I think they were just flies. I think this guy doesn't live on this planet. No. I can't help thinking that the flies ought to choose something more wholesome to buzz around than this guy. Is that wrong of me? Uh, he's kind of insane, yeah. Therefore, on the evening I shared the company of Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. Hold it! <sighs> when exactly did you notice it had gone missing? Uh, such idle thoughts near uh, occupy my mind. I am... Bushed with a greater ideas? In other words, you didn't notice because you're an idiot. Several days passed between your outing to the tavern and Mr. Natsumi's room visit, did it not? Yes, it would appear that the note disappeared sometime in that uh, interval. Indeed. Such idle thoughts near occupy my mind. I'm... I have no idea what that means. Hmm. Something Shakespearean. And yet during the time, Miss Green was comatose in the hospital, was she not? Clearly then, she could not have been stealing things from Mr. Shamspear's room. Mm, country. Oh. oh no. Oh yes, yes of course. It's all some sort of misunderstanding, it, isn't it Mr. Prosecutor, sir? Hmm. You have so far failed to give a satisfier... Uh, blah, 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 blah. You failed to give a satisfactory explanation as to how you came by the note. Uh-oh. 
He's on her case. Uh. I'm not here to advocate for your defense, madam. I won't tolerate inconsistencies in your story. I will throw the book at you. You would do well to remember that. I'm no one's friend. How dare me? What's Lord Van Zeek's getting at? Mm. Did I say... I should have said that in my head. I said that out loud. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. You think I suck into this man's room, do you? Why would I do that? It doesn't make any sense. Holy oh! It seems that this note was actually delivered to Mr. Shamspear about a week ago. Oh, does it? Yeah, but for some reason it ended up in your possession. I can't think of any way that could have happened except for you breaking into Mr. Shamspear's room. Objection. That's an objection. But for what reason would the witness have done that? Uh, I am, um... I won't deny that Miss Green's possession of the note would appear to defy logic. However, until and unless her involvement in this case can be proven in some other way. Any further pursuit of this note is meaningless! Miss Green could only have come in the possession of the note by stealing it from Mr. Shamspear's room! Da -da. Or she found it on the ground! Or she got it in a birthday party package! And yet, there's no obvious reason why she would have done such a thing. Because she's innocent! What if there was some other reason she broke into his home? Yes! We should pursue that idea, Mr. Nanahodo! I don't want to say lodgings. It trips me up. It's not a normal way of speaking. Mm -hmm. We're close now. I can feel it. We're so close to a breakthrough! Oh, no. I can point out the villain here. And as for that torn off piece of envelope, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what you mean. You think I stuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I do that? Because of the poison. Objection. Gotcha. Yesterday at the hospital, we saw you with this bottle. And though the contents spilt during the course of our meeting, a small quantity remained. According to the defense's independent analysis, Mr. Sholm's chemistry set, the liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as strychnine. What? Strychnine? Blah! The very same poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear. Blah! Miss Green, you broke into this man's room for one reason and one reason alone. To cover the end of the pipe that feeds the gas lamp in Mr. Shamspear's room with poison. Uh. Can, can this really be true? You... you broke into my room to 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 do It may seem incredible to the court. To give you your just desserts, you buffoon. But from the remaining clues, there is only one logical conclusion that we can reach. The person who attempted to take Mr. Shamsphere's life with poison was you, Miss Olive Green! How oh dare! How oh dare! How oh dare he! Me! Oh! What did you do? You gave her a heart attack, you heartless renal Oh, stay. dar! Consul, are you seriously suggesting this woman put poison on the end of the gas pipe with intent to kill? I am, your beardiness. There's no other way to explain the facts. My beard is actually real. It's my hair that's fake. But if Miss Green did indeed set this uh, odious trap six days ago, and the victim had put his mouth to the pipe that very evening as expected, the attempted murder would have happened six days ago, surely. Ah, well, yeah, that's a very good point. Hmm. Perhaps not, my lord. I beg your pardon? What? There was significant police presence in the area that evening on account of the incident on Briar Road. Local residents were being interviewed throughout the night as part of the ongoing inquiry. A, circums a circumspect criminal would likely have chosen not to carry out any wrongdoing at the time. Lord Van Dracula? And of course, the following morning, there was more activity at Mr. Shamsphere's address. More activity? Ah, yes! 
That's right. You mean his fellow uh, roommate, Mr. Natsumi, being arrested on suspicion of murder. Apartment friend. That's right, Mr. Narahodo. And as the defense has already proposed, Mr. Shamsphere was meddling with the gas in the pipe for a very sinister reason himself. To cause the gas stove in Mr. Natsumi's room to go out, thereby asphyxiating the occupant. Hmm. But once Mr. Natsumi had been arrested, his room was under constant surveillance by the police. In the circumstances, Mr. Shamsphere had no reason to blow air into the gas pipe. His intended victim being in prison cell with the need to tamper with the gas, remove the poison on the pipe lay dormant. And then, three days ago now, the situation changed again. Right. Mr. Natsumi's trial took place here at the Old Bailey came to an end. The trial in which the man stood accused of stabbing Miss Green in the back but was duly acquitted. That resulted in Mr. Natsumi returning to his home for the first time in two days. And that very night, his gas stove mysteriously went out and Mr. Shamsphere was mysteriously poisoned. Um... In conclusion, the poison that we present on the mouth of the gas pipe oh. had been there in the victim's room for four days earlier. Mary! <laughs> why did he say Mary? Martha. With that new one, Martha, why'd you say that name? With that new understanding, <laughs> it's become clear that this letter was all part of the plan. <sighs> what plan? Well, the court will recall that the note gave instructions to visit the slug and salad at 5 o'clock in the morning, and that the recipient should tell nobody else. The reason for those instructions are now very clear. To ensure that the lodger would not be at home at the stated time. To make sure I wasn't home? <gasps> exactly. Oh my god! While you were out, Miss Green could safely slip into your room knowing that she wouldn't be disturbed. You you mean to say that letter was written by Miss Green, yes. And in order to cover her tracks, she took it away with her when she left. Just after she smeared poison all over the mouth of the gas pipe in your room. But it wasn't really murder because she smeared it on the gas pipe, meaning he was trying to commit murder. Order! Order! Darn it. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Uh, uh. Just who are you? Why did you try to kill me? Miss Green's motive should be obvious. She probably wants to kill him right now, I would. Oh. It's all tied up with someone whose name we've heard several times already during the course of this trial. So, that's what's behind all these. You will share your apparent understanding with the court, please, defense. Which person is behind the woman's motive for the attack on the victim's life? Scientist says she'll get what she w she'll get support in jail. Duncan Maybe. Ross. Maybe. That's right. Before the defendant, Mr. Natsumi took up residence in the lodgings of Mr. Garadeb's apartment. Somebody else was renting the room. Mr. Duncan Ross. I knew I'd heard that name somewhere before. It was all over the paper a month ago, where the man died in strange circumstances at the haunted lodgings. Hmm, that does ring a vague- Ah! Of course, yes, I remember now. The young man they claimed was strangled by the uh, convict's cash or some such. Sadly, my lord, it wasn't a curse of any kind, nor was it an accident. The man died as a result of Mr. Shamsphere blowing into the gas pipe and causing a gas leak into the room next door. It was murder, plain and simple. <sighs> well, what do you know then? The world is so unfair. Curses, curious deaths, that all people care about. If it's an interesting story they want to know, it doesn't cross their minds that real people are involved. And once they're bored, 
Just one month later, once the story's lost its appeal, everyone's forgotten him. You mean you? Duncan was... Mr. Ross was Miss Green's fiancé. Fiancé! You may not have known until now who Miss Green really is, Mr. Shamsphere. But she knows exactly who you are all along. Because you're her sworn enemy. The murderer who took the life of the man she was to marry. Mary! Guys, making it worse by being a jerk. I know, right? Miss Green, is that not the case? That in order to exact revenge on Mr. Shamspear, you smeared poison all over the end of the gas pipe. Da, 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 She's da, 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 da. so defeated, I want to give her hope. This, this is all quite extraordinary. I'm correct in my understanding that you now accuse both parties, Consul. Each on a different accounts of murder. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, my lord, that's correct. Objection. Inhaling so deeply, it appears that may fledgling learned friend has taken in a lungful of dubious gas that's causing his judgment to be clouded. What? Why would Mr. Shamspear have wanted to kill these lodgers, as you say? You have completely failed to provide a motive to substantiate your accusation against that man. Y yes that's right, Mr. Reaper, my liege! I- I have been slighted! Tis all lies! I deny every utterance! And you'll have to forgive me, Mr. Narahada, sir. <clears throat> but I don't intend to admit to anything, either. Oh, Miss Green? I'm sure you'll think I'm being very rude, but... I'm not going to be sent to the gallows for the likes of this scoundrel! Oh gosh, she would go to the gallows. Objection. But you broke into the man's room! If you didn't do it, smear poison on the pipe, what was your reason? She would go, she would be hung for attempted murder? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it was. Strict punishments. Maybe that's why they didn't have much crime back in the Victorian era. I thought I'd have a look around, that's all. I'm sorry, what? You can't prove anything. You're right. I suspected him. So I thought perhaps I might find some evidence of something in his room. Evidence that it was him who took Duncan's life. Oh, vileness of villainy, oh, tired tyranny, oh, whatever this woman. But in any case... When I leave my room, I do return the key and lock. Slap that silly fi uh, smile off your face. I'll do it for you. Okay. <laughs> the whole place is falling apart. The locks on the doors are no different. Duncan showed me once how to unlock the door with some taps and a piece of wire when we used to... Uh... Oh, awfulness, awfulness, tyranny, profanity of a woman. We will consider your trespassing on some future occasion, but for now, tell the court what you found, what evidence your search revealed. Mm. Well, I spotted the note that I'd sent him lying on the floor. When I went to pick it up, I noticed something. One of the floorboards was loose, and underneath it I discovered a secret hiding place. Eh? Hey? Ah, yes, we also discovered that hiding place. Inside, we found a newspaper cutting, a photograph, and an empty tin box. Ah, oh, yes. Well, the thing is, when I found it, the box wasn't empty. What? There was something in it? Mm. Yes. This rather nice key. Oh! It's, it's, his, it's his key to his stash. What are you doing with that? What the? Every ounce of color is drained from his face. Give it here. Give it to me now. It's, it's mine. I inherited it. Oh, my gosh. What? 
What was that witness? What did you say? You inherited it? No, uh, I mean, um, no! Uh... What's all this about? He inherited that key? It was obviously important to you, since you'd gone to such lengths to hide it, so I took it. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's for, but you took something precious from me, so I took something precious from you. So, what if it means you can't open something now? I don't care. Give it back this minute! Give it to me! I will stab you through with this paintbrush. Calm yourself, witness! Just a key. <laughs> so, Mr. Shamsphere has tried to, uh... Has tried, and in one case succeeded, to take the life of two lodgers now. Yes. His motive for doing so is the key to everything that's happened. Oh, I like Miss Green. She's awesome. It's true that there appears to be motive to support the accusation against Mr. Shamsphere at first. But considering everything we know now, I think there's actually something that could explain it. What? Oof! I need to recall every piece of evidence at our disposal. Everything we've seen and heard thus far. Because I'm sure that I, I just caught a glimpse of the link that runs through all these events. In that case, Consul, I must demand that you present the evidence to the court in support of your claim. What is it that you, uh, that can explain the motivation for Mr. Shamsphere's alleged crimes? That would be the, uh, I think the capital offenders file. Oh, the one where it says he has the money. Mm -hmm. There's something about money. That. that would be the bad guys thing. That's an official police report, is it not? The Sheldon file? How did you get the hold of that? Sheldon? The now sadly deceased Mr. Ross and the defendant Mr. Natsumi have only one thing linking them. The fact that they had the home in the same room as Sheldon. Well, yes, we know this, certainly. A room that was formerly occupied by Selden. Until, that is, he was arrested by Scotland Yard for his involvement in multiple burglaries. I see. And it so happens that the convict Sheldon left behind one substantial mystery when he died. Yes, some 1,000 pounds worth of loot that he stole. Which as yet remains to be found. Ah, uh, yes, of course. It's coming back to me now. It's written in this file here. A thousand pounds lost en route to hell. That is how the papers summed it up. And it seems that one particular fellow inmate was with the convict in his final moments. He's the cellmate. Oh, he could be the cellmate. He's the cellmate. He just said, I inherited it. Yeah. It's not hard to imagine Sheldon trusting that inmate with his most closely guarded secret. The location of the stolen loot, and perhaps a key to unlock whatever container the valuables were in. Ooh! Oh, you mean this key is... Uh... That's right. Mr. Shamsphere, it was you, wasn't it? You were the capital offender's side when he died, were you not? What are you talking about? Tis a false charge, I tell you, a false charge! The name of the inmate who was with Sheldon at his death isn't noted in this file. But a simple telegram to the prison where he died would quickly tell us how false the charge really is. Um... But, but even if it's true, why would the man be so intent on killing every sub of subsequent occupant of the convict's room? There's only one explanation for that, my lord. It was in that very room that Sheldon hid his loot. <sighs> so, it all comes out. That's right. And having established that, all of Mr. Shamsphere's subsequent actions yeah, start to make perfect sense. When he was let out of prison following Sheldon's death, he made immediately for the medic... Uh, bleh, 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 bleh. He made immediately for the Garibald's lodgings in the hope of renting the room that Sheldon had. However, the retired army man was unable to offer him the accommodation of his choice. Because Sheldon's old room was already being let out to somebody else, Mr. Duncan Ross. Ah. 
Which is why Mr. Shamsphere subsequently devised his gas space plot to kill the occupant of the room. And when he was successful, he presumably intended to inquire about switching into the newly vacant room. However, a certain jittery someone had beaten him to it. Mr. Natsume, the defendant of this case, no less. So you decided to use the ploy with the gas again, didn't you, Mr. Shamsphere? This time to outs Mr. Natsume. All for one simple and a various reason. To get your hands on a thousand pounds of loot left behind by a dead convict. You... Uh, oh! And scientist is reminding the chat that would be almost $200,000 today. Looks like I'm gonna snuff it before they get to, uh, looks like I'm gonna snuff it before they stretch my neck. Listen, I want you to have me loot. Anything to stop the coppers getting their uh, mitts on it. Hmm. It's in in the room where I was uh, lodging when they got me. Er, uh, this is the key to it. Take it. Always stay one step ahead, mate. See you in L, I guess. Shamsphere. Oh, wow, his name was Shamsphere then. Yeah, he's always been the same. Theater people. No offense to any theater people. Uh, darn it. It's mine. What did he just say? It's mine! That loot is mine! Dude, you killed two people. Oh. <laughs> M M Mr. Shamsphere? It's all lies. I don't accept any of it. Why should I? After all, you don't have a shred of evidence. You can't prove I killed that fellow. Forsooth, I'm the victim here, remember? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, hmm? uh, if I don't admit to it, there's nothing you can do. You can't arrest me for the time being, anyway. Barely, you can't arrest the victim, You can you? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so close, I just need a few more hours. I swore to myself that I'd get my hands on it, that I can almost taste it now. Do you really think I'd give up? Ah, uh, there's no question in my mind now. This man is guilty. Yeah. But he seems so utterly intoxicated by the idea of that loot, Ryanosuke. I'm afraid that however hard you press him, he'll never admit to what he's done, Mr. Naruto. But he just admitted he wanted the loot. Um, there is a way. Pardon? There's one way I can finish him off. No! He's already committed the most heinous crimes to get his hands on this loot. Which means we... All we need to do is find it first. A fine plan. Were it not for the fact that the police thoroughly searched the room following the death of Mr. Ross. Yeah, but Miss Green has the key. If it's there at all, it must be very well hidden indeed. Hmm. Without conclusive evidence, I certainly cannot rule. If only... If only there was a way we could find the convict's loot quickly. Hmm. Miss Green has the key, though. This is the final piece in this complex puzzle. But I think we might have it in our possession already. Or rather, I think we may have, well, something that can help us find where that loot is hidden. Um, my lord. Yes, Conchal, what is it? The defense would like to make a proposal about how to find the late convict's hidden loot. I believe we've already are in possession of something that could give us a clue as to its whereabouts. Blah! It's our last chance, so it has to be worth a gamble. Besides, we've used the same technique once already. It definitely paid off then. What are you getting at? Very well, Consul. Let the court hear your idea, please. What do you propose we can use in order to locate the hidden place where the deceased convict's hall was? Uh... Is there a photograph showing it, or...? Uh... Oh, that's right. We could use Shom's, uh... Seeker gun. The skin prints. 
Yeah. We could do that and see where maybe they... That's where you'd be able to find where the loot is in Natsumi's room. I'm doing it. Okay. Take that! If I'm not mistaken, those are Mr. Shamsphere's handprints on the wall of his lodgings. That's correct, my lord. Exposed as a result of the defense's independent investigating of the scene. Based on a wonderful new discovery in the field of forensic science by the great detective, Mr. Sholmes. A great detective? Is that some kind of joke? Do you really think I'm going to be daunted by a man with such a ridiculous title? Um... Uh, oh, that's probably Sholmes. I should think that a great bard ought to recognize such a title when he hears one, Mr. Shamsphere. Hello. Perhaps we could compete for the honor of most ridiculous title. Yeah, tis Herlock Sholmes himself. <laughs> what are you doing here, great detective? Your unusual haunts are the filthy back ends of the capital, are they not? Ah, Mr. Reaper, it's been too long. And I see your complexion has worsened since we last met. M Mr. Sholmes? He does know Lord v Van Zeeks then. Well enough to say anything, and then the mic... Wait, why he's a vampire? What? Mr. Sholmes! Though you may be heralded as a great detective by the population at large, that does not give you the right to come and go in my courtroom as you see fit. If I may, my lord. Mr. Sholmes' new developed tech scientific method has helped us uncover vital clues in this case already. Clues, you say? I call them skinship prints, my lord. My method identifies every location touched by an individual under scrutiny. It's the method by which we were able to ascertain this gentleman's gas pipe activities. Ha! You need only a small sample of something the individual has previously touched to make an indicator solution. Mm. If your crime, sir, I use the teacup you had been holding elementary. So now, Mr. Narahoto... Ah, uh, yes! What am I, uh, what am I to use as a simple, bleh, what am I used to make as a sample to make the indicator solution this time? Um, thank you for offering to help, Mr. Sholmes. When the convict was arrested, he was living in what was now Sozeki's room. We need a sample to help locate Sheldon's loot. What's hidden in this room? What form will the sample take? Uh... What? Seldon's loot. I don't. Mm. Wait. Well, so. Wait, what? We have to find Seldon's handprints? I don't even understand. Well, we'll need something of Seldon's in order to create the indicator solution to find his loot. And something the convict owned happens to be in the possession of somebody who lies in this court record. Upon my word, Mr. Narihodo, your powers of reasoning appear to be up and up. Yeah, but the the fingerprints would be all, all messed up by now. So which particular person do you have in mind? From whom can we obtain a possession of the late convict Sheldon to create the... Whoops! Take that! Uh... And what, prey does said person possess that could be applicable to our purpose? Uh... Nothing. Let's hear your new and improved powers of reasoning and work, my dear fellow. Uh... Dear me, you left... I just twitched. Are you currently concocting an elaborate excuse? Not some clever Japanese joke about a wet noodle, I hope? Ha! Ah, you got me! I accidentally hit the button. I think we need to reconsider this from the start, Mr. Narahodo. Wait, why did I get an achievement? Maybe you should save. Why do I feel as though Susie is studying my left eye now? Accidental I'm ready, achievement. I'm ready and waiting, Mr. Narihoto. The rest is in your capable hands. Look, save. It's Miss Green. She has the key of All the right. convict around her neck. Right. I accidentally jumped the gun and I hit the button no, too I know, soon. But still, there we go. Miss Green. Me, me, me? What do you want with me? The key around your neck, if you please. Sorry. Uh. Ah. That key belonged to Sheldon. There will be remnants of secretions from this man's skin on its surface that we can use. Ah, very true. 
Well done, my good fellow. That is the sample we need. Using it, we can create the indicator solution required for Mr. Sholm's skin print seeker. And find out exactly what the inmate touched in the room that he used to rent. Ah! Mr. Shamsphere is one great to another, I assure you. If the late convict's hall is hidden somewhere in this former lodgings, I shall uncover it no more than 30 minutes. Oh! So, Mr. Shamsphere, the truth is well within our grasp now, and as such, you will never get your hands on the stolen wealth! Ah! <sighs> I'll gladly let Mr. Shems have this key. No! Give me the key! The detective shan't have it! It's over, Mr. Shamsphere. No! No! Too bad Ms. Green didn't just take his stuff and run instead of trying to kill him. Yeah, I know. You're out of options now. There's only one thing left for you to do. Admit your guilt! Whoa! Oh, shameful spear! Despair! By thy name! Wow. Got him. Oh, I wish a Miss Green could go back in time and take all his loot and not try to kill him. Then she could have gotten real justice. Oh, well. I never intended to kill the man. I just... I just wanted to drive him out of the room. That's all. So you'd have time to find the convict's whole, uh, hall of loot, huh? Yet, after you've killed the young man, you still didn't move into the room. Oh, I thought there was a cat on your lap. I was like, be careful, Amber. Mm. I asked the landlord, of course. I pleaded with him, but he refused. Hello, bear. That's a bear. Why? I was three months behind with rent, for one thing. Oh, Mr. Garrett, I really had to put up with that, huh? Hmm. And he had the gas repair work done immediately afterwards, putting the room out of action for a while. And then, this Japanese man swooped in just at the right moment to sign the new lease. Poor Mr. Natsume. What unfortunate timing he had. Oh, then, five days ago... After the incident on Briar Road, when the Japanese fellow got himself arrested, I thought I'd finally have my chance, but it wasn't to be. No, the scene was sealed off and guarded by the police night and day. And if I remember rightly, Mr. Sholm spent the whole day in there reading books. I couldn't even enter the room, let alone search for the loot. Which is why on the day Mr. Natsumi was acquitted and returned to his room, you once again tried your trick of blowing air into the gas pipe that feeds the stove in his room. Unbeknownst to you, however, that the action would lead you into a deadly trap. William Shamsphere, how does it go? To be or not to be, that is the question. From Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. Well, let me tell you in your case, it's not to be. That is the answer. You deserve to die for what you've done. Ma, <laughs> oh. Is that all he has to say? You gonna be crazy again? Nope. Well, that was interesting. He's gone. At first, I really did think it was just a terrible accident. I never forget our conversation the night before Duncan died. The gas supply in my new lodgings are a complete disaster, you know, Olive? The gas... Oh, that's all. Oh, uh, the gas supply? Yeah, the stove always seems to go out in the middle of the night for some reason. That's no joke. Yeah, they say it's the convict's curse, whatever that is. Oh, Duncan, please don't stay there. I don't care how cheap it is. All right, then. If that's that important to you, I'll start looking for a new place. There are spare rooms at my house. Why don't you leave that horrible room tonight? No, I'd better not. 
We said we'd wait until we graduated before we told our parents, remember? But, oh, he was a nice guy. But that was the last time that we ever spoke. That very night, he fell victim to the gas. If only I'd known it was going to happen, if I'd insisted that he left that horrible room that instant. But instead, all I've left with is bitter regret. I stopped going to school after that, but something kept drawing me back to the house on Bry Road. Yes, I saw a stooped, eastern-looking man with a moustache coming out of the house one day when I was there. He walked up the road to Grub's Grubbery for some food, so I followed him and sat myself down next to him. He had some watery-looking soup and started to pick a quarrel with the publican. That place is cursed, I tell you, cursed! The ghost of that convict who used to live there is trying to suffocate me! I wake up in the middle of the night, freezing to death because the stove has gone out! The room is full of gas, and I can hardly breathe! But the pipes have been checked, no problems there! It's like, I am the problem! That's what they are thinking! But how could that be? Duncan was gone, and now this man had almost suffocated suffered the same fate could it really be a curse she was too smart that's her problem yep then i remembered a rumor i'd heard about the gas companies going around investigating the gas installations a rumor ah uh, you mean um she's too smart miss green yep yes Everybody's heard the stories. Ignorance is bliss, they say. It would yep. have been better if she didn't know. Yep. Everyone's heard the stories, it seems. But how they go around checking all the pipes? How anything connected to the gas can be extinguished by blowing air into the pipe work. Uh, that's when it started. A little flicker of doubt in the back of my mind. That just, it wouldn't go away. Was it really... An accident, though. <sighs> Once I'd had the idea, it wouldn't leave me alone. It plagued me day and night. I know all that is. So I bought this at one of the black markets in the East End. Ah, a black market? I'd never been. I just heard people talking about them. And you really can't buy anything you think of there. In some ways, being able to get my hands on this so easily made me even more determined. I had to find out. One way or another, I had to. Was Duncan's death an accident, or was it murder? And your chosen method for establishing the truth was simple but highly effective. Smear poison on the gas pipe you suspected the man of tampering with and wait. If Mr. Shamsphere was innocent, nothing would come of what you, he'd done. But, if he was guilty, he would pay for his crimes dearly. Ooh, very well written. I found out the name of the man that I suspected, William Shamsphere. And when I wrote him this little note... I have information regarding the death of... Duncan Ross. You gotta speak up. Huh? Oh, I have information. Uh, come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter, or the meeting is a, uh, it's a matter of utmost importance. <laughs> if he'd done it, I knew that would worry him enough so he would be sure to go if he had done it so i waited to see if that note worked and of course mr shamsphere followed the instructions to the letter which meant he was guilty because otherwise he wouldn't have gone mm -hmm. i worked out what the gas pipe was straight away when i got into his apartment and i smeared a good amount of the poison i'd bought all around the mouth of the pipe all the time praying that the devil's work wouldn't be done and that it was all just some wild fantasy. 
Actually, no. All the time praying that the devil's work would be done, and the culprit would get his just desserts. Whoa! <clears throat> oh, Susie feels for her. Mm, well, not you go, Miss Green. Natsumi is safe again. Miss Green is my spirit animal. Three days ago, when you were the first stood in the dock before me, this whole affair seemed relatively straightforward. Yeah, yes, my lord. I certainly never imagined the depths of depravity that we would subsequently find lurking behind the scenes. It has been a long road, my Nipponese friend. What? Oh, yes. Yes, it has. And one I certainly didn't envision walking with you. Uh, right. Nevertheless, together we have searched the light at the end of the tunnel as it were. Miss Green? Yes, my lord. You will henceforth be stripped of your freedom as punishment for the attempted murder of Mr. William Spear. Yes, I know. And you, Mr. Sham Spear, you will be tried for the murder of Mr. Duncan Ross in cold blood and the subsequent attempted murder of Mr. Sozeki no Sami here present. No. Uh, um, Mr. Narahodo. Um, yes, uh, w w what is it? Yesterday at the hospital, when you and your friend stopped me from, uh, uh... From ending your life by drinking what was left in the poison bottle? Uh... I, I wasn't myself. I can't even really remember what was going through my mind. <sighs> to be or not to be, I suppose. That was the question. It's so hard to answer, it seems. Hmm. Well, personally, I'm glad you being here, Miss Green. Oh! And I'd like to believe... That it's a blessing Mr. Shamsphere didn't die when he ingested the poison. For your sake, at the very least. Well, she's not going to be executed. That's good. Because of you, I chose life, not death. And now you've made the truth come out at last. Of what happened? Really? I can't thank you enough. Almost green. My eyes. I think someone's cutting onions. Mr. Natsumi. Yes, my lord. The court declares that you are exonerated from all blame in this matter. Accordingly, I would call upon the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to present a verdict of not guilty. We're in full agreement, my lord. All right, let's get on with it. I hereby declare the defendant... Not guilty. Soseki is free. Mr. Natsumi is not guilty. And now he's gonna run to Japan. I would and be like, like so long, here. England. No more of this shenanigans. <laughs> I'm outie. So long, suck down. <laughs> so long, suck down. <laughs> yes. Court is adjourned. Oh my Natsumi gosh. never appeared in my courtroom again. Oh, I won't. I am out of here. Your country is terrible. 23rd of February, 3.24 p.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Oh, yes, yes, at last. Divine justice duly done. Ah, divine justice? My dear fellow, if there were any divine justice in this world, you would have shaved that mustache. No! This is nothing to do with my mustache! <laughs> Some say that a luxuriant mustache is a sign of physical prowess, Mr. Sholmes. Lugum student, Mr. Narahora Esquire, once again, once again, you have saved me from doom! I'm very happy to have been able to help, Mr. Natsumi. Congratulations on your acquittal. 
your second in almost as many days. Ah! I was first acquitted with and gained affection for the English literature whilst in our great homeland empire. And then, by a twist of fate, I was brought to the land that bore fruit of that literature. Only, the city of bricks and mortar became my prison. Try as I might, I never found my feet here. In the end, I confined myself to my room and lived life through friendly old books. Mm. You've had such a difficult time, Mr. Natsume, haven't you? Ah, but a week ago now, I dragged you out of the dark and digi room of yours, did I not? You did, you did! And I've seen more life in this week than in all my years to date! And for the first time, I feel I've begun to see the true face of the English that's so far been hidden from behind the wall of fog. My dear fellow, there is nothing special about the true face of the English, as you put it. Whoever, wherever one goes in the world, humans are human. There are few genuine differences, of course. Yes, I think you are right. I have finally started to see that, and I've come to understand something. English people are jerks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this town is so terrible. I've worked out why I was attracted to English literature in the first place. It made sense to me that whatever our nationality, we humans all have the same hopes and fears. We're all doing our best to live. He's just saying that till he leaves. <laughs> ah, well said. I've come to feel the same way. <laughs> He's like, I'm saying that now, but I'm out of here. I'm never coming back here. I made a decision too. Uh, I'm going to cut short my study tour here and return to Japan. What? I think that's a great idea. Get out of here while you still can. Just when we become friends here in England. What a terrible shame. But please leave, Sasaki. Oh, I know. That does tug on my heartstrings. It really does. But... I decided I'd like to take everything I've learned here in Britain and write something on my own. Uh, a novel of sorts, I suppose. Oh my! So you'll be creating your own literature, Mr. Natsume? How wonderful! Oh, well, not... I mean... I wouldn't presume to call it literature! Ah, uh, why not then? What is precisely the definition, Mr. Moustache? Oh, I suppose you're right, yes. It will, in a way, be literature. But as of now, all I know is that I'd like to try my hand at writing. I have no delusions of grandeur. I, for one, would love to read your work. Well, all things considered, it may be for the best. After all, you have once again emerged victorious. From a battle with the Reaper. Ha! Ah! That's very true. He better leave before he dies. And there's no salvation for a person in the dock when the Reaper is the prosecutor. Susie, why did you say that? The desire to return post-haste to the perceived safety of your homeland is one I quite understand. Mm. Oh my goodness, yes. Faced with such a terrifying prospect of dying after you win the case. Nobody would consider that cowardly, I'm sure. You people are terrible. I hate this place, but, 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 but that's, that's not why I'm leaving. I mean it. Ah, objection. <laughs> and that was the case that we found ourselves embroiled in six months ago now. So Zeki-san did indeed return to Japan and submitted a report from both cases to the government. It was one reading that report that Professor Mikotoba was prompted to visit the scholar. And barely any time later, Suzasa, Susie was given the news that she must return to Japan as well. On the back of the telegram, stating falsely that her father had fallen gravely ill. Mm. The only possible explanation that comes to mind is what happened after the trial on the following day. The day that we uncovered the loot hidden by the now-deceased convict in his former lodgings. Oh, it's still going, wow. Oh, let's see. Oh. Tim says, I'd be running for the boat after I got out of the court if I was him also. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, let's see. OH says, so long. Oh, let's see. Cheerio, Soseki, go back to Japan with you. Yep. Yep. 24th of February. Oh, well done, Mr. Sholmes. How simply marvelous of you to uncover the secret hiding place in just one day. Wasn't it supposed to be 30 minutes? 
Ah, as I believe I told you, my dear fellows, skin prints are extremely useful in such situations. Wouldn't you agree, Gregson? Oh. Oh, Gregsy's been happily munching in agreement this whole time, you know, Harley. Happily? I think perhaps humorously might be closer to the truth. So? It transpires the main... The man fashioned a hiding place in the ceiling. And what's in it? What exactly is the loot? Let us look then, if you're ready. Let's examine the late burglar's hall. Mm. What the? What is that? Ooh. It looks to be some sort of neckband or collar. A collar? It's huge, though. And look at all the gemstones in it. I can see why it was claimed to be worth a thousand pounds. Perhaps it could... Ah, I could use it as a belt. Oh, have you noticed the inside there? There are some dark stains. Blood. Uh, you, you don't think they could be blood, do you? I mean, there's quite a lot of it. On second thought, perhaps I won't have it as a belt. Then of course, there's this emblem here. A large letter B and a small crown. What does it signify, do you think? Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Hmm. I feel as though I've seen that emblem somewhere before, you know. Where could it have been? That's enough of that, I think. A uh, what? What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes? All the color has drained from his face. Well, Inspector, I believe you ought to be taking this, ought you? It could be valuable evidence, after all. It must be kept safely under lock and key. Uh, yes, yes, um, get your grubby hands off that, you lot, and hand it over now. Wait, what is it? Mmm, the why plot didn't, thickens. Why didn't he want Iris to see it? I'd never seen a collar that large before, and all those jewels certainly look to be extremely valuable. But that's not what stood out the most to me. At least, not once I'd noticed it. Those dark marks on the inside of the collar, those stains, could they really have been blood? Well, that was a funny case, wasn't it? But it's all buttoned up now. And you look very pleased, Iris. Mm. I am, because I started to wonder what I could use as the basis of this month's story in the magazine. But this case will be perfect. It's been so fascinating. You're talking about the latest installment of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I presume? The mystery of the knife in the midst. And the mustached man and the convict's curse, perhaps. I could make it a two-part story in one. Oh, I can't wait. Um, a word, please, Iris. Yes, what is it, Harley? I'm sorry, but you can't write about this case. It's out of the question. Uh, what? Why not? It's a great case. Then I shall have to insist that you limit yourself to the first of your two titles. The second must never be written. Is that clear? Interesting. People who sing and so it was the that the second of Soseki san's cases became buried in obscurity. Now, looking back, I feel I understand. I can see why Mr. Sholmes forbade Iris from publishing the story. Why? It would take a little longer before I saw the link between everything that had happened and would happen. For it wasn't until two months after the arrival of Susato-san's letter that events began to unfurl again. With an incident that took place at the very heart of the eagerly awaited Great Exhibition of London. Ooh, that gave me chills. Mm. The end. Alright, that's the end of the case, guys. Well, people are saying Hound of the Baskervilles, maybe. Mm. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and that for was awesome. helping us with the case. 
I just, it makes me wonder, like, if you set up, like, a, like, some people set up, like, booby traps on their lawn, like, for people, like, if they're trying to attack them or something, isn't that kind of what, uh, she did? Like, she just kind of set a booby trap to, like, in case he did it. Like, she didn't actually physically kill him, so, I don't know. It she just... wouldn't be, I, I don't believe, when she said he saved her life, I don't think that she died because of it. I think that she went to jail, obviously. Yeah, I know, but... but... I, I don't think she's going to get the death penalty. The other guy killed one person and almost killed another person, so he's done. Yeah. That's, you know... I mean, at least Miss Green was honest. I don't think I could bring... <laughs> I, I have anger issues, so if that was me, I would never admit that I did it. I would be like, well, I don't know why poison was on your pipe, but I'm just glad that, you know, <laughs> you got sick... <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. All right. Okay. Because I'd be so mad. Like, that would really make me mad if he killed my fiance. I'd be like, well, I guess maybe, you know, maybe uh, fate got you. Okay. All right. So, anyway, guys and gals, <laughs> that is going to do it for today's uh, The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. <laughs> If you guys ever want to help the channel, you can watch our new YouTube Shorts uh, series, which by now we actually have 11 episodes. A Mr. Freeze video went up today, which was hilarious. And if you want to help us uh, find certain shorts, you can always comment on the Shorts videos or in any of our videos, tell us your favorite moments uh, from our LPs, and I will gladly make them into 30-second to 15-minute or 50-second Shorts and upload them every day at 7 a.m., from now until a very long time. We have 9,000 videos. We're going to find some way of making use of those videos and being paid again. So the shorts are a thing that are a part of the channel, and they're going to be a big part uh, as your 7 o'clock video every day. But we need your guys' help to um, you know, put together some stuff. And we've had a lot of people come and help us with Injustice uh, Moments and Kirby and uh, Smash Brothers and all kinds of stuff. So Yay. we're very um, appreciative of that. And we hope you guys have a good one. Thanks so much for watching. Ace Attorney will start with a brand new case tomorrow. Uh, I think around the same time because I might have an appointment. I might not. And uh, then we've got, of course, um, Bowser's Jr. things starting up around 7.30 tonight. Yay! And my stream will be at 10 o'clock on the Marvel thing. So. But, yeah, but... And seriously, though, don't attempt murder people. No, don't do not do that. Don't be me! Don't be anger issue, Amber! Yeah. Be good! All right, guys. God bless and happy gaming. <laughs> Thank you so much, Capcom, for providing a copy of this game. We're having a lot of fun with it. And Ace Attorney will continue on until sometime in September. I think we'll be done with the game right around the time the Sonic game comes out. Which yeah! will be the first new game! Technically. I mean, the Marvel game technically is new, too. But um, this is... I wish I knew about the Marvel game back in July. I would have been playing it then as well. But, oh, well. It was in beta, and I probably could have gotten into it. Yay. All right, people. See you later. Have a good one. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right. God bless. Happy gaming. See ya.